Okay, fantastic. Alrighty, hello everyone. My name is Luke Logan. I'm a PhD student at Illinois Tech. And today I'll be discussing whether or not it was worth it to re-architect storage stacks for modern hardware. So there's been a rapid evolution in storage hardware. With every new generation of storage, there's been nearly an order of magnitude performance increase. In addition, new interfaces to hardware are being exposed. Uh, the traditional interface was the block device interface provided by hard drives. NVMe is now exposed the zone namespace API, which is uh, giving direct control over NVMe flash pages and persistent memory provides a byte addressable uh, way of indexing memory, which is very deviant from the typical block abstraction. And lastly, CXL is an upcoming interface, which will be providing even more room for optimization. Uh, traditional parallel file systems are used in the majority of HPC sites. These systems are typically designed around the monolithic hard drive, however. They rely on the typical Linux kernel IO stack, and they do not take advantage of new hardware interfaces, such as uh, the zone namespace interface. So these parallel file systems typically have significant software overheads over these new modern uh, storage devices. So to combat these kinds of overheads, uh, new technologies are emerging, which re-architect the storage stack entirely in uh, user space. And this reduces software overheads, provides hardware-specific IO optimizations, such as new device drivers uh, and new paths to the hardware. And a lot of implementation effort has already been done to make uh, these things possible. And an example of such a work is Deus. So, however, what is the actual impact of re-architecting these storage stacks entirely from scratch? Uh, the value of optimizing these storage stacks has not been well studied in a distributed setting. Many single node evaluations have been conducted. A million single node file systems have been created and evaluated and published in top venues, uh, but these do not account for the complexities of distributed metadata management and the networking costs that those would impose. A lot of works do have some distributed evaluations, but these are a lot of times over an emulated hardware, such as emulated DRAM, which just does not have the same characteristics as a persistent memory module. And lastly, most evaluations are for outdated versions of the software. So for example, a lot of IO500 results are over Deus 1.0. So our goal in this work is to quantify the performance benefit of using a re-architected storage stack such as Deus compared to traditional storage stacks like OrangeFS and BGFS over real hardware. So in our evaluation, we had the following test bed. We had a test bed with four machines and each machine had persistent memory, two terabytes of persistent memory, and 64 terabytes of NVMe with a 100 gigabit interconnect. For our software, we had CentOS 8. Uh, we used Deos 2.1, OrangeFS 2.9, and BGF 3.7. Uh, these were the most recent versions of the software at the time we ran these evaluations. So for our first set of experiments, we want to demonstrate how well does Deos perform compared to BGFS and OrangeFS under various workloads on real hardware. So for our first, so for these experiments, we used uh, the default configurations for OrangeFS and BGFS. We used stripe sizes for OrangeFS, the default stripe size was 64 kilobytes, and for BGFS, the default stripe size is 512 kilobytes. For the file system as the back end of these systems, we used ext4. And in these tests, we co-located uh, the metadata and data servers. This isn't really typical in an HPC environment. Typically, there's a separation between compute and storage. But uh, this was just a limitation of our test environment. For Deos, we conducted a comparative study over NVMEs and PMEM. For the NVMe experiments, we used a 50 gigabyte persistent memory cache that was as low as we could get Deos to go. 
uh, it really requires uh, you to set a specific value for that. And we used five terabytes of NVMe as the remaining. So the majority of I.O. was supposed to go to the NVMe in those tests. And for the server configuration of Deus, we had one dedicated core on each of the nodes. So for our first test, we ran a stress test of the I.O. 500 MD test. So in this evaluation, the MD test stresses metadata operations like open and close. Um, in each of the cases, we found that Deus was roughly 15 times faster than every other system, which is somewhat expected. A lot of papers have shown that there is significant overheads due to the kernel stack. With file systems like BGFS and uh, OrangeFS, there's a lot of overhead due to the kernel because of interrupts and context switches. In addition, the implementations of these systems simply didn't really consider at the time the overheads of software because they were designed in the age of hard drive. So uh, Deus alternatively re-architected the storage stack. It uses API interception instead of system calls in order to get IO requests to the hardware. It also provides optimized device drivers such as the SPDK and utilizes uh, new interfaces like DAX uh, to get the optimum performance out of hardware. And that's why we see such significant performance differences between Deus and these traditional stacks. For IOR hard, this runs an actual IO workload, not just metadata accesses. It performs pretty much the worst case of a workload imaginable for a parallel file system. It does small unaligned IOs. Uh, and in these evaluations, we found that Deus was eight times faster than all of the competitors that we tested against which is again expected based off of what we saw in the last evaluation. Now this evaluation personally surprised me a little bit. So this evaluation performs large sequential IO for five minutes straight, and it's the best possible case you could expect out of a PFS. Uh, and still in this evaluation, Deus outperformed the alternatives by about 10 times. Now, those evaluations that we saw previously were all just simple stress tests. Uh, what about some sort of real applications? So in this evaluation, we chose two real applications, VPIC and BDCATS. VPIC is a write-only particle simulator, which performs a checkpoint restart workload. Uh, it does 30 gigabytes of I.O. per checkpoint, and it does 16 total checkpoints, resulting in 480 gigabytes in total. And BDCATS is a particle clustering algorithm which takes the input of VPIC and performs uh, k-means on that workload. So roughly speaking, this workload is in a similar vein to IOR Easy, and it resulted in a similar output to IOR Easy, which was a six times performance improvement. Now that we've seen various stress tests of Deus compared to other systems, we decided to run a comparative study of Deus against itself. So in this test, we wanted to see how well Deus performs when using different storage backends. So in these, in these experiments, we used another real application, Cosmic Tagger. Cosmic Tagger is a convolutional neural network for separating neutrino pixels. It has uh, 430,000 samples in the data set, which results in a total of 430 gigabytes in data size. And each I.O. operation performed in Cosmic Tagger is in the realm of 20 to 40 kilobytes, which is also uh, pretty small I.O. operations. For the configuration of Deus, we used 50 gigabytes of PMEM, which was the minimum that we could configure it to. And we put 5 terabytes of NVMe as the total storage backend there. The intention is that most of the I.O. is supposed to hit the NVMe, so that we can see the impact of having different I.O. backends on the NVMe. And again, we used one server core as the backend in this experiment. So overall, this experiment ran for a total of four minutes on EXT4. We found that when varying between these different backends, EXT4 was about four minutes, BDEV was about three minutes, and then the SPDK was about two and a half minutes. So overall, the time reduction from using ext4 as a backend went down by 40% compared to using the optimized Intel's SPDK as the storage backend. Okay. 
So in this uh, work, we conducted numerous benchmarks of Deus over modern hardware in a distributed setting. We found that Deus outperforms traditional storage stacks by as much as 15 times on modern hardware. And we found that the performance improvement on, of this was due to hardware optimization provided by the Deus platform. So overall, we can conclude that it was worthwhile to utilize hardware optimized storage stacks as opposed to simply reusing the age old, decade old technologies like BGFS and OrangeFS and Luster. Okay, uh, that was the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you all for listening. It was, uh, it is the way that BGFS comes, so it is the way that I use BGFS. Oh, Orange FS. It is, I use the Fuse uh, module for Orange FS. But Fuse, honestly, is even worse uh, than using the kernel. Just use it. Interesting. I did not know that at all. Yeah. I'm glad we're in a friendly space to discuss ideas. Yeah. <laughs> if you present this in SC, another great year, a great year like me will come on. Yeah, I mean, even still, I would argue that even if there is a way to bypass a system called an orange FS, it's still relying on the kernel's overall IO stack. It's still relying on the lock device drivers and the IO schedulers and all of the millions of other complications that the kernel stack has. Even, even if you go directly to the kernel, it's still an overhead, uh, still a lot of overhead there, I would argue at least. Yes, and yes. Correct. Yeah. Just like they are, the best to use this Does it actually make a system call? Yes. Yeah. They are the MT4 is more to have than the typical work of this. Now, they don't use the time as well as SDK. So yes, your Linux kernel gets in the way a little bit, uh, but in the same way, the Linux kernel was put by the woman talent, they also can be a key for the Linux kernel. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I I see what you mean. <laughs> All right. Okay.